very pleased to present Epilepsy Ireland's Audit of Financial Statements for the year ending 31st of December 2022. Sorry, 2022. Mazars were appointed as our new auditors in 2022, and these are the first financial statements the firm have audited. I want to thank Aideen Morgan and her team at Mazars for their thorough and professional work since last October. The fresh perspective brought to the audit process this year offers the board, our members, and all our donors and funders great reassurance about how we conduct our financial affairs. The accounts are prepared in accordance with the statement that recommend the practice for charities, SORP, or SORP as it is known, the best practice accounting standard and financial reporting for charities. With the support of Mazars, we have expanded on the information provided in both the notes to the accounts and the director's report this year. This includes more detail on the work undertaken by the board and our subcommittees, our reserves, key accounting policies used, the main risks facing the organization and our future plans. With these changes, the accounts are more detailed and transfer transparent than ever before. So I'd like to take a few minutes to highlight some of the most important financial information for 2022. Just to note that when I'm quoting numbers, I'm going to round to the nearest thousand, but the exact numbers are all in the financial statements themselves. Our overall result for the year was a deficit of 108,000. While this is in excess of 2021, deficit of 25,000, it was significantly lower than what we had budgeted at the beginning of the year. It should also be noted that deficits in 2021 and 2022 followed three years between 2018 and 2020 in which surpluses were recorded. The 2020 to out outcome was the result of a reasonably positive performance in generating income given the external environment and through ongoing efforts to minimize costs. Our total income was just over 1.53 million, virtually unchanged from the previous year. There's a detailed breakdown in those four to eight in the accounts. Almost half of our income was in Section 39 grants from the HSC, which are provided under regional service level agreements. These grants are restricted for the provision of our support services. And like other Section 39 organizations, the amounts have not changed for over a decade. For several years now, it's cost significantly more to provide HSE contracted services than the amounts of income we receive. And in 2022, 53,000 of our operational reserve was used to meet the shortfall, an increase of 18,000 on 2021, but significantly less than what was required in previous years. Efforts are continuing across the sector to address HSC funding deficits, which are having a huge impact on organizations like Epilepsy Ireland and our ability to provide supports we are here to provide. The situation has become even worse in, reaching, in recent years with all the challenges presented by inflation and the impact that COVID-19 had on fundraising activities. One of the most notable implications of static funding, funding is what it means for staff recruitment and retention. Epilepsy Ireland has an excellent track record in retaining skilled, dedicated staff members, but in 2022, more than one third of our roles were vacant at some point during the year. We are continuing to play a role in addressing the funding situation, and we very much welcome the government's move this year to provide one-off inflation funding to Section 39 organizations, including ourselves. Non-HSE grants in 2022 included 91,000 in relation to our Training for Success program, and 75,000 through the support scheme for national organizations, which supports two core staff positions. We are pleased to have secured the 3% increase in this funding, which is in place until 2025. Total non-grant income in 2022 was 594,000. This includes 224,000 raised through donations, memberships, and legacies, and 172,000, which was raised through raffles, lotteries, lottery campaigns, appeals, and fundraising events. Total fundraising income was therefore 396,000. And while this was down 7% compared to 2021, when adjusted for a significant one-off legacy of donation of 100,000 in 2021, 
fundraising income showed a welcome 22% increase year on year as the impact of COVID-19 pandemic began to lessen. Community fundraising activities such as church gate collections and Rose Week returned, and while recruiting volunteers was a challenge, these activities were vital in reducing the organization's overall de deficit at the year end. On behalf of everyone involved in the organization, I would like to express, express our immense gratitude to all those who supported our work through 2022. Without your efforts, much of the work that our chairperson spoke about earlier simply couldn't be done. Income from our training program in epilepsy awareness and the administration of Book al Madaslam is another vital source of funds for the charity. And in 2022, this returned to pre-COVID levels of 167,000. Finally, investment on Miss Lane's income for the year amounted to 25,000 euro. Our expenditure is detailed in those nine to 13 of the accounts. Total expenditure in 2022 was 1.63 million an increase of 81,000 on the previous year. Under SORC, expenditure is reported in terms of charitable activities and raising funds. Of every one euro we spent in 2022, 87 cents went to direct charitable objectives, which consists of information and support, training and ed education, awareness raising, advocacy, and epilepsy research. 13 cents was spent on raising funds. The biggest changes here were in the areas of research, which increased by 60%, and epilepsy awareness, which increased by 26%. The nature of our work providing support services to people with epilepsy and their families is highly dependent on direct staffing resources. We employ skilled, experienced services and training staff, supported by professional expertise in fundraising and administration. In 2022, the average number of employees was 22, comprised of 15 in service delivery and training, and seven in administration and funding. Total pay costs were just over 1 million in 2022, which was 20,000 lower compared to 2021, mainly to a higher than normal number of vacancies during the year. The average salary paid was just over 38,500 euro, or 45,800 per whole time equivalent. No additional payments or bonuses of any kind are paid to Epilepsy Ireland employees, apart from employer and pension fund contributions. There are more details of employees in note 12 of the financial statements, including our disclosure of salaries greater than 60,000 euro. The Finance and Audit Subcommittee and the board continues to closely monitor our expenditure against agreed budgets and we have done our best in recent years to extract the maximum possible value from every euro we spend. The costs continue to rise. This continues to be a challenge. But through tight management, contingency planning, and a more strategic approach to fundraising, we are confident that we can achieve a stable and regular break-even position within the next two years without affecting our core services. Our balance sheet remains strong, with the most significant change has been an 85 thousand drop in our cash position to just over 1 million euro and 180 108 thousand euro drop in the charities funds to 1.46 million both of which reflect the deficit incurred for the year no 21 of the accounts explains our funds held and shows the movements in these funds during the year at year end we retained 86 thousand of restricted funds to be used in future years which includes 48 thousand Euro of monies raised by the family and friends of the late Louise Young to help establish a new project to distribute and evaluate seizure detection devices. Our unrestricted operational reserve fell by 81,000 euro during the year, with the majority of that used to offset HSC funding deficit. Our policy is to hold at least six months of planned operational expenditure in reserve to ensure continued financial security and to provide for contingencies. The unrestricted reserve at the end of 2022 was 942,000 euro, which is in line with our policy. In fact, it was this policy that enabled the organization to make it through the last few difficult years relatively unscathed without the need to cut back on our activities. 
The board has also designated reserves for use in, in special strategic activities. And in 2022, we used 73,000 euro from our research funding reserve to fund new projects and 29,000 euro from our public awareness reserve to, to organize inter international epilepsy day activities, both of which are important activities in our strategic plan. Taking all factors into account and based on projections, the board is satisfied that the charity remains financially stable with no immediate going concern issues. The board and finance and other subcommittee will continue to monitor our financial position and risks. We are hopeful that 2023 will see a more positive financial result, but there are still significant challenges to address to maintain our current activities and achieve goals, the goals laid down in our strategic plan. Most immediately, we need the HSC funding issue to be addressed and we need to return our fundraising income to pre-2020 levels as soon as possible. As ever, if you are in a position to help in any way, please do get in touch. The team would love to hear from you. Thank you again to all our donors and volunteers who supported us in 2022. I also want to thank the members of the Finance and Knowledge Subcommittee for their ongoing advice and oversight and our management team who continue to deliver excellent results while working within tight budgets. I'd now like to present the 2022 financial statements to the meeting and invite any questions that any of our members may have. 